Hi, I'm Diana Montford, and this is Yes, the Diana Montford Show. My guest is the founder and CEO of the National LGBT Archives, Mr. Rich Wandel, who's going to tell us about the Stonewall Rebellion. He was alive then, and he knows all about it, being the archivist uh, for our community. Rich Wandel, hi. So hi. tell us about the Stonewall Rebellion. When did it happen? Stonewall Rebellion happened in the, in the wee hours of uh, June 28th which uh, at the time we're taping this is, is really f ex more or less exactly 43 years ago uh, mm -hmm. today, this being June 28th. And um, the bar, which was in Sheridan Square in New York City, in the heart of Greenwich Village, uh, it was a hangout um, mostly for, for college-age uh, guys, but there was also a mixture of, uh, of what then would have been referred to as transvestites, what now we would refer to as transgendered persons, uh, and also a handful of women would normally be in the bar, and indeed were on that night. Would those be butch lesbians? Uh, yeah, probably it would be it would be a combination. It was really there's really an amazing um, cross section of of our communities that were involved that night and the subsequent rioting. Mm -hmm. Some in the bar, some outside the bar. But it's really an amazing. Uh, cross uh, of, of our communities. Uh, the bar was raided. It was not unusual to have a gay bar raided at that time. It was quite normal, as a matter of fact. What was unusual this time was that it, it was also involved, apparently, the, uh, the federal authorities. Uh, and it was led by a New York City inspector by the name of Seymour Pine. And on this particular occasion, although they had raided the bar actually a few nights before, uh, they were going to do more damage than usual. And they went in with the intention not only of the usual harassment of people. Normally, you would go into a bar and you would check people's IDs, and there would be uh, a small number of people who uh, did not have IDs, and you might arrest them. You would go to any uh, uh, transvestites that were there, and you would um, say, come into the bathroom so we can check your gender, because... Uh, it, believe it or not, it's absurd, but it was illegal to to be dressed as the opposite gender or so-called opposite. I don't mm -hmm. think gender is really opposite. And so but esoteric, excuse me, was the law that one had to wear three articles of clothing appropriate to one's gender. gender. Right. Which had meant basically that it had a label from a woman's or a men's store, depending on your gender at birth. So they went into the bar. Uh, they started their usual stuff. They also started breaking up the bar, as a matter of fact. There were two different rooms in, uh, in the Stonewall Inn. And in the, in, the, in the, I would say back room, but it's actually on the side. The side room uh, was a place where the, the few transvestites usually hung out. And there they encountered resistance. Uh, people who were saying, no, I'm not going to go in and do this check into the, into the bathroom that you want. Mm -hmm. And so they, in, in verbally, you know, giving lip, uh, it started there. Uh, there were also uh, some uh, some of the the butch women who were there who mm -hmm. also started talking back a bit. And things very quickly got I'm out of hand close. Yes. within the bar itself. And they decided to make um, arrests. It, it gets a little hazy here. The, the major work on this has been done uh, by David Carter in his book Stonewall, which is the expert uh, book on the subject and very, very readable as well. Uh, and one of the first people to ar be arrested was, uh, was a very butch woman. And as they were taking her out of the bar uh, to put her into a police car, uh, she uh, avoided them. She managed to get free of them. They grabbed her again, put her in the car. She got out again. Meanwhile, a crowd is beginning to gather in front of the stone wall here in Sheridan Square. That crowd would have been made up not only of bar goers from neighborhood bars as well as the stone wall, but also a lot of, there were a lot of street people uh, of all kinds, including uh, what we referred to at the time as street transvestites, transvestites who were making your living on the streets. Like best, poor Sylvia Rivera. Like Sylvia Rivera yes. and Marsha Johnson yes. and, and people of that nature. And they started first verbally, uh, shouting back, and then somebody started uh, throwing pennies uh, at, uh, at the police. The police got frightened by what was happening, and they retreated back into the bar and locked themselves in. All right, This is unheard of. 
when has that ever happened before? The police are retreating from the crowd. Uh, and they were, quite frankly, very, very frightened. And according to Inspector Pine, who talked about it in later years, um, they were really uh, extremely frightened. And Pine was afraid that there would even be gunfire because of the fear of the police. Uh, Pine tried to get other help. And, uh, and for whatever reason, he called the local precinct, and they pretty much ignored him. They didn't come. So they're stuck in the bar. Um, people are first shouting, then they're throwing pennies. Uh, a couple of people managed to rip uh, up out of the ground a, um, a, a parking meter, which we were, they were then trying to use as a battering ram uh, against the door. Uh, somebody tried to throw lighted things into uh, in 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 that way, which never really caught, but but there was already a difficulty here. Finally. Um, fire department actually came to the rescue of the police and they pulled up uh, and they pulled up a paddy wagon and started to arrest uh, more people. Meanwhile the crowd is getting angrier uh, and angrier and it, uh, it proceeded to, uh, to a three-day riot in Greenwich Village. Um, it was however, it was a gay riot. We do things a little differently. One of, one of the famous stories about it is a line of, of street queens uh, doing kick dances and shouting, we are, we the, are the Stonewall Stone. girls. We wear our hair in curls. Da 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 da. da. No underwear. Because we think we're girls. Yes. Yes. Uh, I was not so there. I was 13 it, years old. Once I was it home. out into the streets. So, so now you not only have the initial uh, uh, handful of, of butch women, the initial handful of, of transvestites, the initial uh, young college age kind of crowd, yuppie. Well, they wouldn't call yuppies then, but that kind yeah, of yeah. that kind of crowd. Now you had everybody on the street. You had the youngsters on the street, the homeless youngsters, gay homeless youngsters the on the street. Also. The hippies. The uh, uh, you you. It was two doors down from the Village Voice office at that yes. time, so you had reporters there instantly. One of whom actually wound up locked up locked in the bar with the police yes. uh, at first and reporting on it. You were also uh, very close to what was the gay organization of that time, the Mattachine Society. Um, it was ripe for happening. This was not the first ever gay riot in the United States. That honor goes uh, uh, a few years before to the West Coast. The also, Black I mean, to do Yes, the Black Cat uh, bar. But what was different this time is precisely that it was time. We had been prepared, if you will, by indeed the Madison Society, by people like uh, Frank Kameny, who a few years before had said, gay is good. Now, today we say, well, of course. I mean, you know, that's pretty obvious. But not then. At that time, even within gay organizations, they weren't so much saying gay is good. They were saying, uh, okay, we know we're sick, but you shouldn't pick on us. It would it be tantamount today to saying uh, homicide is good or something. Yeah. You know. You know uh, and indeed, when Frank Kameny first coined that gay is good, it was picked up immediately by a couple of other people that he worked with. But by and large, the, what we call the gay community today was saying, huh, really? Uh, it was a new idea. Uh, they had also had begun in 19, I think, 64 or 65, uh, picketing once a year uh, mm -hmm. at Independence Hall in Philadelphia. So there was an idea here that, that this was possible without the world ending. Uh, and of course, they had learned a great deal from, from the civil rights uh, movement and the second wave feminism that was going on at the time also, and the anti-war movement. All of, this, all of this was coming together and exploded uh, on the streets of Greenwich Village. Perhaps even more importantly than that, you had already in place people who knew how to take advantage of it, who were able to say, we're not going to have this forgotten a week or two now. There's almost no coverage in the press, by the way, except mm -hmm. for the Village Voice. There's almost no coverage in the press. Uh, so it could very easily have disappeared. Queen bees stinging mad at raid on gay bars. Yes, right. It, that's the Village Voice headline. Mm -hmm. Uh, it could very, and it was as, as that headline implies. The initial reaction of police and others were, "Isn't that funny? Isn't that cute?" Or something like that. The image they're parodying the, the war riots. How right. amusing! They're How so amusing. clever, these fags. Right. My my. Exactly. But there were people there who had already been schooled, so to speak, in anti-war movement or in civil rights movement or or in women's movement, 
um, to not let that happen. And they began organizing immediately, first with the Gay Liberation Front, uh, and then by December of that year, another organization called the Gay Activist Alliance, who wanted to be even more in your face and, and you know, chaining oneself to the mayor's desk and things of that nature. This was basically the beginning of the end for the Mattachine Society and the beginning yeah. of the contemporary gay rights movement, yes. was Yes, it? it was, right. Yes. Uh, the Mattachine Society had done wonderful work over the years. Uh, at the time of the, of the riots, Dick Leitch uh, was the president of the Mattachine Society. Mm -hmm. The Mattachine Society, not too long before, had succeeded, uh, for the most part, obviously not 100%, but for the most part, in getting the mayor to stop the police from raiding bars. Mayor the Wagner. The mayor did real Wasn't stuff. It? No, it was Mayor Lindsay. Oh, Mayor Lindsay. Yes. Mayor Wagner was a horror. Yes. <laughs> Actually, uh, was and mayor, wasn't mayor he Wagner. Ed Koch's boyfriend? Uh, that I don't know. Oh. That I can't say. Officially, Mayor Koch was with Bess Myers. Oh, yes. <laughs> that's, even that's some years later. Anyway, um, but there was a change. Uh, Mattachine's initial reaction after the riots was to just try to calm uh, everybody down. All right, But it wasn't time for that anymore. No. It wasn't time for that I anymore. I lived, I was 13 years old. I went to school half a block from the Stonewall at St. Joseph's School on Christopher Street. And I lived at 77th, 7th Avenue in this mm -hmm. ultra gay mm -hmm. building called the Vermeer with my family. My mother had moved us there when I was nine and a half because I was so obviously trans. She wanted me to be safe, and the village was the only place in the pre-Stonewall world where one could be comparatively safe. And I do remember those riots, although I did not take part because I was 13 years old. At the time, I was, I was 24, um, but I was in New Jersey uh, living in a monastery. I was a monk at the time in a, in a seminarian. So again, as I'm saying, this wasn't particularly covered. So I didn't even know about Stonewall until maybe uh, uh, almost a year later what after do you think, I had left the monastery. What do you think of Martin Duberman's excellent book? Do you like it? I think Martin Duberman's book is Martin Duberman's book is essentially a um, uh, interviews with I think it's five yes. uh, different people, yes, and yes. it's very interesting in, in that way. Uh, it does not, however, compare to the in-depth research that David Carter. I've What's read both. They're almost opposite each other. Uh, Martin Duberman gives much more credit to the transgender population, whereas David Carter is it, maintains that street queens in 1969 meant, for example, a gay man who wore eye makeup or something. Well, I don't know. I think, I think David's book shows a, a, a variety of different, what we now we would see as different parts of our communities uh, being involved in it. And I think that's one of the interesting things uh, about, uh, about the Stonewall rebellion and talking about it afterwards is that various parts of our community have said we were the first to do it we, we mm -hmm. were the ones who did it and reading david's book the the impression that i get is that they're all correct yes because but shockingly i will not mention any names but there are people who have tried to make money and bullied and shaken down politicians saying I'm the legend. I was there. Yeah, Send yes. me money. We know yeah, yeah, the person. Right. I mean, That's I will true. not mention that person's name. Yes. But to think that someone would take our, right. in effect, sacred legacy and use it as a money-making opportunity is shocking. Right. But not beyond not the surprising. can of, uh, yes, not but not surprising. Not surprising. Right. So you were saying, okay, now the, the riots have gone on. It's three days later. It's over. Now what are we going to do? We want the world to remember this. How do we get them to remember it? And don't give me that go to Philadelphia Independence Hall stuff. We want different. Well, they did do one more. I mean, this is only, what, a week before the, the July yes, 4th yes, Philadelphia. Yes. So they did do one more. Uh, and uh, things were very different, even in Philadelphia that year. The, the, the Philadelphia activists, so to speak, had, uh, were, were very intent uh, in the four or five years that they were doing this to uh, look, quote, unquote, normal. Ladies, dresses, right. gentlemen. Ties, so jackets. this time that didn't happen. This time, of course, they, they were still there, but you also had people, hippies. You had people coming in, whatever. They Let your freak wear. flag fly. Right, yeah. exactly. Uh, and it was time, and it was a good change. I think uh, uh, an enormous amount of credit has to be given to those who did it beforehand, but it was clearly the time to do it differently. Do you feel that that was because of the uh, other movements that had gone before? Again, it's always a, it's always a combination of things. It's a, certainly a combination of the other movements, especially the civil rights movement. People of my generation, uh, I was in high school, I graduated high school in 63, so I was accustomed to seeing on television um, blacks 
fighting back, yeah. you know, uh, peacefully uh, through uh, 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 Southern Christian Leadership Conference and being hosed down with fire hoses yeah. as a result. Uh, I was accustomed to seeing that on TV. I was accustomed to seeing the violent reaction of police. Um, and so, indeed, that was a, it was a disillusionment with, uh, you know, the ideal of America where we're all free and everything was clearly not quite true and mm -hmm. uh, still isn't, actually. But, but it was a, for a high school student, it was a revelation to find that out and then uh, to be radicalized in well, that way. When and this then that spilled over into the issues that mattered to us, which was, damn it, I'm as good as anybody else and yes. you're not going to put me down And anymore. when the Stonewall Rebellion happened, it was illegal for LGBT folk to congregate. We were considered insane. We were mm -hmm. subject to arrest simply for existence. A bar could lose its license for serving a drink to a homosexual. And that was uh, uh, something right. that the Mattachine Society right. tried to prove. And they finally got arrested right. by going to a gay bar right. and saying, I'm a homosexual. Right. I wish to buy a drink. Right. To, uh, Julius. Yes. Specifically. Yes, yes. Right. So the world has progressed, but we've made it progress. And without our cojones, we would still be hiding in the shadows. And aren't we lucky that we found the strength to stand up to the straight world and say, we're as important as anyone else. And it's, I think it's also important to remember that this is not, this is not finished. I, I just saw uh, within the past two days, for example, two uh, young women, uh, a couple who were uh, shot in the head in Texas, right? And we don't know the details yet. We don't know exactly. We don't know for sure the motivation, but it looks awfully, uh, awfully suspicious that it's about uh, they did not like the idea of two. 19-year-old women having a relationship in Texas. So this still goes on. Uh, we, we get accustomed to New York, mm -hmm. you know, or Chicago or San Francisco or the big cities. Mm -hmm. um, it's not that way throughout, throughout the country. There's still an enormous amount to be done. But the tactic, the winning tactic for us has always been and remains today the simple act of coming out and saying, here I am, I'm me, I don't care what you think about it. Uh, that, more than anything else, and all the tactics that we've used, that has been the deciding factor and continues mm -hmm. to be. Although it can be dangerous, depending on where you are. Would you advise someone in a small town somewhere west of Laramie to come out? Wouldn't that be dangerous? Uh, I think we have had our martyrs in the past, and that time is not over. Mm -hmm. However, uh, I noticed I, for, for a while after being, uh, I was very much an activist at those times here in New York, and then after a while I got tired and I moved out to a small city uh, in western Pennsylvania. And uh, nobody was out. I mean, there was like any place, there was all sorts of people who everybody knew, mm -hmm. but they would never say it out loud. I was, mm -hmm. I was the exception. I said it out loud. Uh, I'm gay and I don't care what you Didn't think about Didn't your friends it. say, shh, 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 you're causing yeah. us problems, you're flaunting it. And, and my partner at the time, uh, uh, or as we would say in those days, my lover at mm -hmm. the time, um, was very much everybody knew, but he was never going to say it. And one of the things that I noticed, actually, was that he got a lot more trouble than I did, all right? Because by his whole demeanor of hiding, of hiding, was making a loud statement that there's something wrong with me, please pick on me, I all right? As opposed to me, uh, once I was walking down the street and some, uh, uh, I don't know, teenagers or whatever, and the other side yelled a faggot or something like that, I walked across the street and I talked to them. Now, I'm not saying that I changed their minds or stopped them from ever doing that to anybody, mm -hmm. but they never did it to me again. Weren't because you afraid they, they react would hit to you? one's own, your own pride of self. But weren't you afraid that they might hit you or kill you? Sure. Well, maybe hit. I wasn't necessarily afraid of being killed, but hit. Sure I was. But it's tremendously empowering to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Okay. Do you think gay women or gay men get more hostility? Um, it depends, all right? I think the, one, the people who are most obviously gender... Uh, Non-conforming, uh, uh, Non-conforming, yes. get it. Well, you're talking about a, a, a butch woman, <coughs> or you're talking about a femme man, or obviously a transgendered exactly. person, uh, get it the most. Uh, but if you're talking about this... The, the kind of middle of the road appearing people, mm -hmm. all right? Like uh, you, for uh, example. Like the society really gets, I think, more upset 
with, with men. And the reason for that, it seems to me, is because for, for, for a man to be gay is to very directly challenge uh, a lot of the assumptions of the society. If a woman is gay, well, it, it, it makes sense. She wants to be a man. We all know that men are better. All right, but for a man to do that, and of course the it's, it's erroneous, but the idea being that if you're a gay man, you want to be a woman, uh, that's that sticks in their craw. How could you want that? That's a statement. How could somebody prefer to be a woman? That's a statement that our assumptions about men being superior is not true, uh, and that's threatening to the society. Young people, what would you say to young people today about our? increasingly remote youth in the 60s? Um, young people today are they're coming out much, much earlier than I did. I came out to myself. I'm not even talking about publicly. I came out to myself at the age of 24. That was not unusual for that time period. If it you is were unusual for now, all right? Yes, but someone like myself had no choice. I was out right. from the age yes. of two. Yes, you know. there's always people uh, who, because they're they're butch women or because they're femme men mm -hmm. or because they're transgender. They, they never were able to hide exactly. and never did. But for the vast majority of us, hiding appeared to be possible, mm -hmm. or at least in the official sense, although ultimately everybody knew anyway, right? Uh, uh, but anyway, so I came out at the age of, of 24. Today, young people are coming out much earlier. And of course, it makes sense that you would come out more or less at puberty, if not, if not earlier. That, yes. that makes sense, doesn't it? Um, and it's a, good, it's a good thing to be able to do so. But also, you're there, many of them are still at an age where they are uh, physically, legally, and, uh, and emotionally, in every way, still under the control of parents or other adults. Yes. And that's a very serious problem. Uh, you still have bullying going on. So it's not for me. Uh, you know, I can say that in the long run, it is better to be out. For all the crap that you might get, it's better to be out. But, but I cannot say, um, make a blanket statement, because I don't know each individual's uh, situation at home, at school. Uh, and a great number of homeless youth are, are, are gay and lesbian, you know, disproportionate yes, yes, to yes. the number of gays and lesbians in the society because they literally uh, get thrown out of the house or hounded out of school or, or whatever. Terrible. Yeah. Absolutely terrible. If you're a gay person, young, old, or in between, uh, you know, we feel solidarity yeah. with you for all the good that does you, you know. But um, I'm amazed at how we have progressed in 43 mm -hmm. years, aren't you? Yeah. I, I never dreamed that everything would change so quickly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We, have, we have simultaneously uh, accomplished more than we thought we could and less than we mm -hmm. thought we could. Yeah. More than we thought we could. I mean, we couldn't conceive of marriage, my God. Uh, you know, uh, uh, not at all. Just. We wouldn't have thought it, it possible. It would be like a duck and a platypus marrying. Yeah, it would yeah, have been it'd be like whatever. Bizarre, um, yeah. On the other hand, the early uh, gay liberation movement, and mm -hmm. it was indeed the gay liberation movement rather than the gay rights movement, uh, we were looking, we were, we were young hippies, leftists. Mm -hmm. uh, we uh, were concerned also with, uh, with peace in the war in Vietnam. Yes. Uh, we were concerned with uh, 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 the rights of women. Um, and poverty and things yes. of that nature. Yes. And it is, it is regrettably, uh, a sign of our success that now we also have gay Republicans who don't give a damn about anything Isn't other than the greed amazing? of the rest of the Republican Party. That is just unbelievable. It's unbelievable, right. And indeed, that is a sign of our success. And because what's happening here, it seems to me anyway, is that the people who are really in charge, you know, the greed, the, the bankers, they use uh, homosexuality as a way to control people. They don't really give a damn about it, mm -hmm. one way or the other. It's, it's a tool that they use. And as that tool becomes unworkable, as it has begun to do so, um, they don't care. They'll give up on that, because what they're really concerned with is the money they're making, the, the incredible reduction in the amount of taxes paid by corporations and rich people compared to 20 or 30 years ago. That's what they really care. And also, once they realized that we were a sizable voting bloc and they, they could make money by 
categorizing us and here, here, nice rainbow accessories for your celebration yeah. and all that. Yeah, yeah, glad to. Yes, but okay. My guest has been Mr. Rich Wandel, founder of the National LGBT Archives, located at the Center in New York City on 13th Street. Uh, he's been telling us about the Stonewall Rebellion, the Boston Tea Party of the modern gay rights movement. It changed everything, and that's why I'm sitting here out and proud. That's why Rich is out and proud. That's why we have a National LGBT Archive. That's why mm -hmm. we have not been shot or tarred and feathered or other nasty stuff which used to happen all the time to our kind. Uh, if people want to contact you? Uh, you can reach me at the, uh, at the archive at the LGBT Community Center um, either through the webpage www.gaycenter.org by email to richw at gaycenter.org uh, by telephone to 212-620 7310 asked for the archive. Sounds great. Again, my guest has been Mr. Rich Wandel, founder of the National LGBT Archive. I'm Diana Montford. I love you a lot. Even if no one else loves you, I love you. You matter to me. And I will see you next time. And I have to hit that bye bye button. But you know how much I love you and you take good care of yourself. Love you. See you next time. Bye. Hands off my stuff now. Um, <laughs> So you were ready for this, okay. Yeah. Uh, are, you, are you going live? Yeah. Uh, you're taking phone calls and stuff? Yeah. Okay, so let me... Uh, I have a plan, uh, so she's going to call. Okay. So I'll just in case we got... And yes, Topless we, in Times Square, and, uh, folks. Is, that, is this nerve or what? Like, imagine just being in Times Square scares they're hard, some they're, people. They're horrified. And Sandy horrified. is topless in Times Square. Sounds like the title of a Cole Porter With song. The, yeah, Topless well, in Times Square. Uh, yes, I, I, I sing. Uh, a foggy day. Give my in regards to Broadway. Remember me to Herald Square. I love Herald Square. He's such a darling. Yes, who's he? I don't know. She knows them all, folks. I've she, met them all. She, she met, met That's them. not the name he gave me, though. What did he give you? Smith. Smith? Why? Uh, they're all named Smith. Uh, At least when they go to the motel, they're all named Smith.